guys, Jan Hicks of Jan Hicks Creates here. Today I've got something a little bit different for you. Um, today's video should probably be more termed more uh, yarn tube than floss tube because today it is all about knitting. Knitting brioche to be specific. Um, so if you're not interested, go ahead and turn me off. Um, but if you would like to see me knitting brioche two-handed, two colors at the same time. If this intrigues you, stay tuned. Um, so what I have for you today is show, for those who are familiar with brioche, is to show you how to, you know, in, in traditional brioche, you work across the row in one color, you slide your stitches back to the beginning of the needle and you work across the row in the second color. What I'm going to show you today is how to work with both colors across the row at the same time. Now, um, mind blown, it's actually easier than you think once, once you get your muscle memory going. This started because I was um, working on Andrea Mowry's um, What the Fade shawl and I was on the last brioche, brioche section and I was getting towards the end of the last brioche section so I probably had 300 some stitches on my needle and um, that means 300 stitches across with the first color slide the neat stitches back to the beginning of the needle 300 some stitches across with the second color which means you know 600 some stitches to get through one row and I got to thinking that um, wondering if it would be possible to work both of those at the same time. My thinking went something like, um, you're doing opposite things with the two colors. One is following the other anyway, just separately. Why not try it at the same time? And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, but if it does work, that should speed up knitting brioche considerably. Now there may be brioche traditionalist purists out there that are just horrified at the thought, um, and that's fine. You know, we all do our our own thing, and whatever we're happy with, that's what works. But for me, I'm just pretty tickled with this. Um, I searched on YouTube to see if it had been done before. I don't want to say I'm the first to discover this, and actually, um, I did come across a video from a couple years ago. I believe a British gentleman who showed you, um, who showed how to do it. I, I think my explanation is a little bit clearer, um, I hope. Um, but regardless, that's the only other video I found. So this isn't something that a lot of people are doing. And I hope it will help um, just, just maybe make brioche even happier than it already is for those of us that love brioche. Um, I will say that this is not for people who are new to brioche. This is for people who really understand how the stitches are created, what the front of the fabric looks like and what the back of the fabric looks like, how they are different and why they are different. Um, so you're, you're really comfortable with brioche. You can read your brioche stitches without a problem and you really understand what's going on. This is for you. If you have just started brioche and you aren't yet there yet, wait, get to the point where you're really comfortable with it and then come back and see me. Brioche is kind of mind blowing on its own. I don't wanna blow your mind any more than it already is. So um, with that, I wanna show you, I have a little swatch started here. What I did was cast on 30 stitches. I've done um, a couple rows of garter stitch and then I've done a couple stitches on each end of garter stitch. Just to keep the ends kind of nice and not have to deal with the, what's going on at the end. So if you wanna follow along with me, um, at this point I'm gonna stop this, this view of the camera and I'm gonna take it to an overhand view. Um, if you wanna follow along, go ahead and get some couple colors of yarn and your needles, cast on 30 stitches. Um, do a couple rows of garter, and you might actually want to do a couple rows of brioche in the traditional way just to kind of get your brioche gears started and oiled a little bit before we start this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this off and I will see you back in a little bit.
Okay, so let's do this. This is my third take because I keep getting the, um, the swatch off camera. So I am hoping that this is going to be third time's a charm. And um, that I can keep everything situated properly. So let me start by saying that um, I do this by working with a color in each hand, just like I do my stranded um, color working. I don't know how well this would work if you do it um, with both yarns, if you, if you do stranded color work with both yarns on your left hand, or if you are a right-handed knitter, a thrower, and you drop your colors um, as you're working them. I don't know whether you'd gain anything if it would make it um, more difficult so that you wouldn't necessarily gain anything by doing this. But all I could say is that if that's the way you knit, give it a try once you understand what's going on here. Um, give it a try and see if it works for you. This is the way I do it. Um, I found that it works very easily. Well, you know, being relative. Um, and so I, I really didn't really think about the other ways until um, just a little bit ago. Um, so holding the two colors, one in each hand, my left hand always has the color that is the first pass color. So whichever color I would use the first time across the row, that is what is in my left hand always. My right hand then is the second pass color. So in this instance, it's light blue for the first pass and gold for the second pass, light color, dark color. Of course, we are doing them all in one pass. So I had started, as I said, I um, started with a, and ended with a garter stitch border. So, and those I'm always doing in blue. So when I get to the end with, um, I just drop the blue when the brioche ends and then knit those last two stitches in the gold. All right, so here is how I thought about this when I first started. If I wanted to do both colors across at the same time, I was going to do the first stitch in blue and then work it in gold and then the next stitch in blue and then in gold. So I would have to understand what each of these colors is doing on this side of the fabric, it is my light color dominant side. So the light color, the blue in this case, is barking the stitches. And the dark color, the gold, is burping the stitches. So I look at my first stitch and I'm starting with my blue, my first pass color. And I look, look at that and it's a single stitch, so I know that has to become a slip yarn over and it's with the blue. So I slip yarn over with the blue. Now before I can do the next stitch on the needle, I have to do something with that with the gold. If it were the gold passes turn, if I had worked all across in the blue and then it was time to do the gold, that stitch, because this is my burp color on this side, that stitch would be burped, brioche purled. I have my yarn in the back still. So this tell, told me right away I need to start this side with both colors in the front. So now I'm ready to go. So when I do this then, I lay my light blue, my blue across the needle to make a yarn over. But before I wanna move it over to my right hand needle, I have to purl it with my gold. So the light blue, I work the light blue part of the stitch and then I burp it with the gold before taking it off moving it to the right hand needle. So that's the two colors worked on that stitch. Now I'm to the second stitch. I look at it. It's already got its slip yarn over so I know I need to either bark it or burp it. You can see my line of knit stitches, burp stitches there, so I know with my light blue I'm going to burp it. So I do that. Now I have, before I can move on to the next stitch, I have to work that with the gold that becomes a slip yarn over. I've essentially already done the slip by working the, the bark, so now I'm just going to do the yarn over. Okay, next stitch, single stitch, it has to become a slip yarn over. So I lay 
the light blue across the needle to create the yarn over, but I don't move it over to the right hand needle yet because first, with the gold, I have to burp it. Okay, next stitch, this gets barked with the light blue, and then it gets a yarn over with the gold. Next stitch, this gets a slip yarn over with the light blue. Again, I don't move it off the left hand needle yet because I then have to work it with the gold, and in this instance, it's the burp. Now, if any of you are following along who don't do brioche and you're hearing all this bark and burp, you're just wondering, I'm barking and burping, what in the world kind of knitting, knitting is this? Well, bark is brioche knit and burp is brioche pearl. Those are the, um, those are the abbreviations that are um, your brioche, special brioche stitches. They're really just knits and pearls, but you know you're doing it with two stitches, basically the, the slip stitch and the yarn over. All right, so back to a brioche knit. Oops, cut the yarn a little bit. And then the slip yarn over with the gold, yarn over with the blue, brioche pearl. Bark, slip yarn over, slip yarn over with the blue, burp with the gold. And you can see how um, having the, the two colors in different hands um, makes it a little clearer, I think, and a little easier to work with the yarns. So bark, slip yarn over, slip yarn over with the blue, burp with the gold. Blue, bark, gold, slip yarn over. Blue, slip yarn over, gold, burp. Blue, bark, gold, slip yarn over, blue, slip yarn over, gold, burp. Blue, bark, gold, slip yarn over, blue, slip yarn over, gold, Burp. You see a bit of a flow starting here. Blue, gold, blue, gold, blue, gold, blue, gold. And it really does get to be a flow. Again, take some muscle memory, take some practice to get to this point. And if you have to add in, if you decide you want to learn how to um, knit with both hands, that's going to be an additional skill you have to, to add to this. I'm going to, um, whoops, brioche knit that last one and then do the yarn over. This one, instead of doing the yarn, bringing the yarn back to the front, I'm just going to knit those last two stitches in gold because we are to the gold border. Okay, so there we have our row completed, both colors at once. Everything is lining up nicely on the top like it's supposed to. So we turn it over to work the gold side. some more yarn. And I keep the my left-handed yarn to the left and my right-handed yarn to the right. They don't ever tangle with this method, but I just like keeping them separate like that. It helps. So again on this side, my light color is in my left hand, my dark color so light color first pass is in my left hand, dark color second pass is in my right hand. I'm going to work those two end stitches and garter. Okay, so the first thing to think about is we're on the we're on the back side. On this side, the gold is dominant. 
the gold is what's what we're burping and the blue is what we're or I'm sorry the gold is what we're barking you can see the lines of nits are in the gold and the blue is what we're burping okay so I look at this first and of course I'm always start with the blue the blue is my the light color is my first pass I look at this first stitch it's the two together so I know that either has to be barked or burped since it's blue on the back side I know it's burp okay and once again you'll see that my gold is on the back side and I need to do a yarn over on this and so that's not going to work so we're going to take that back out move the yarn to the front so again both yarns are starting at the front on this side so now I burp that and then it gets the gold yarn over now in this instance because this side is my bark side for my dark color I don't need to wrap my yarn the whole way around because the next stitch I'm going to be doing with this is going to be a knit stitch so I just leave it laying over top of the needle so the first stitch is done the second stitch it's a it's a single so I know this is a slip yarn over in this case the blue just gets gets laid across the left hand needle just like it did on the first row and with my gold I bark it okay both colors come back to the front I burp the next stitch I have a yarn over then with the gold then I have a slip yarn over with the blue but again I leave it on the left hand needle because first before I can move it off I have to bark it with the gold both colors to the front I burp with the blue have the yarn over with the gold, yarn over blue, bark with the gold. Both colors to the front. I burp with the blue. And you'll see whenever I do, after I do that blurp and I bring the yarn down, because the next stitch is going to be knitting those two together, this just automatically lays along that, um, over top of that left hand needle so that it's just right in the right place for me to come in and do the bark with the gold. And this side really, besides the bringing back both of the yarns back to the front, this side really has a flow to it. So I burp with the blue. It lays, the blue then lays down there, ready to, as a yarn over for the, for the next stitch. Yarn over there with the gold and then bark with the gold both colors to the front, burp, yarn over, yarn over, or I'm sorry, bark, yarn over, burp, yarn over, yarn over, bark, ah, it's there, both colors to the front, burp, yarn over, yarn over, bark, burp, yarn over, yarn over, bark, Burp, yarn over, yarn over, bark. Burp, yarn over, yarn over, bark. You seen that flow? Burp, yarn over, yarn over, bark. So it's kind of like with the yarn overs, they're just kind of in the places they need to be. You don't really have to do anything. They just lay there naturally ready to do the next stitch. The end of that row, forget about the blue and knit those last two stitches. Okay, so there is our back row done. Everything's lining up nicely along the top there. All right, so let's go back to the light row again. And you'll see on this, do you see how some of my stitches here are bigger? Like every other row is bigger. I think this might be the, I'm not sure whether it's the back row or the front row. It's the back row. I'm getting off gauge with my um, burps. So I need to, it gets better as I go along the row. Actually, it gets worse as I go along the row because I'm coming this way on that row. Um, so I need to um, concentrate on, on tidying up those stitches as I'm coming across that row. So... 
back here. Blue goes in the left hand. Gold is in the right hand. Pull out some yarn. Sorry, oh, sorry. All right. Start with a couple garter stitches. And then we're back. So, starting with both yarns in front on both rows, I do a slip yarn over. And then I don't take it off the left needle, I burp it. So we're back on the side where the light blue is the bark and the gold is the burps. So, blue, oops, I around my puzzle piece here. Blue, bark, gold, yarn over, blue, yarn over, gold, burp. Bark, yarn over, yarn over, 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 burp. Do you see the flow? So you'll get to the point, and trust me, you will. It might seem at the beginning that, um, this is so hard and it's so slow that you're not really gaining anything by doing it, not gaining any time. It's not making your brioche any faster, more frustrating than anything. Give it time. Keep working it, just like anything. You have to practice makes perfect, right? And it really is all about muscle memory. After a while, your hands just know what to do. And you can see I, I don't even have to think about it that much. Now that's not to say that I don't get off sometimes, so I always check at the end of the row that everything is lining up like it's supposed to. And there we are. And there we are. One more time, we'll do the the back side. All right, so. Ah. Garter on the end. And then yarn to the front both of these rows. Now this may or may not be how it lines up whenever you do it, you know, your pattern. This is an even number of stitches. It may be different with an odd number of stitches, um, but you'll, you'll be able to figure that out as you get into the pattern. So start with the blue. This is my burp side for my blue, so burp, and then yarn over, yarn over, bark, burp, Yarn over, yarn over, bark. Burp, yarn over, yarn over, bark. And you see how, okay, so the light blue is in the back. I had to bring it to the front. Easy to correct when you can look at what you're doing and understand what's happening with the brioche, what's supposed to be happening. Oopsie, it went to the front again. It needs to lay across that left hand needle in order for me to bark them together. So I hope you're finding this useful. I hope I haven't gone too fast. Um, if you have any questions, please ask me in the comments. Um, if you need me to do it again at a different angle, if you need me to, if it was too fast, this is my first time doing anything like this. So I think I finally got it so it's in the middle of the screen. Um, 
which certainly helps. But if it was too fast, if you really couldn't see what my fingers are doing, if you just need me to explain it more um, or in a different way, let me know and I will give it a whirl. So, there we go. I'm going to look at that row and say, oh, we laid that over the top when it shouldn't have been. You see that? See how I have that yarn over there that I didn't need because I don't have a a blue slip to go with it. So I'm just, just going to take those over and just drop that off and put them back on. Alrighty. Looks right. Looks like brioche. Isn't that pretty? Alright guys, let me know how I went. Have any questions? Etc. Etc. I hope you you enjoyed this and um, that you give it a try. Have a great one. Bye bye.